everyone, in today's video I am going to be sharing with you my top five books that every student should read, based on my opinion, obviously, but because of such an overwhelmingly positive response I got from you all on my January book favorites, uh, I decided to, okay, let's do this, let's do some more book reviews, book recommendation videos, and I've been wanting to do this one in particular for a really long time, but I wasn't really sure if any of you would be interested, but now that I got your okay, okay, let's do this. So let's begin with the first book, which is this one right here. It's called The 10 Day MBA, 4th edition, just in case you want to get the exact one. Um, a step-by-step -step guide to mastering the skills taught in America's top business schools, and it's by Steven Spielbiger. Silbiger. I'm sorry if I massacred the name, but it is this one. If you're looking for it, that's how it looks like. This volume will teach you how to read and understand financial statements, draft and adopt uh, effective and comprehensive marketing plans, comprehend accounting rules and methods. Uh, manage your relationship with your boss, develop corporate strategies, understand the present value concept, use quantitative techniques to evaluate projects, value stock, bond, and option investments, interpret the language of business law, master the most used MBA jargon, and more. Wow, that is a mouthful, and believe you me, that's what I thought when I first picked up this book. Now, why I believe that every student should read this book is because as a student, you're probably on your own for the first time or you're probably trying to sell yourself to get into that graduate school or to get your first job interview or to pay your rent or whatnot. I believe that this book is insanely easy to understand and it deals with hard topics like finance, accounting, marketing, business strategy, business ethics, and strategic selling. So this book pretty much covers everything. I apply the things I learned in here every single day. So definitely if you see this book on Amazon or anywhere, pick it up, give it a go. I know it looks heavy and scary, but it's not. That's why I highly recommend it. The next book on my recommendation list for students is The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Now, I spoke about this book in great detail in my January uh, favorites, book favorites video, so I'm not going to go into much more detail, but I just want to say that if this is the first video you see, this book is about forming and mastering the creation of healthy habits and like step-by-step -step things you can do every day to build up towards your goal, to build up to success, to financial freedom, to achieving that dream of yours and this is the way to go. Um, let me just read you a little bit if you uh, want to know. The Slight Edge is not another self-help tool for traveling the path to success. It is the doorway to creating powerful results in every, any area of your life by using tools you already hold within you. And this book, like I mentioned in my previous video, is very good as in it offers stories from other people that have read this book and applied it to their daily life. So it gives you real life examples of how you can use the lessons taught in this book in your own life. And also you can use it as a manual because it offers things to help you more specifically write down what you want to achieve and keep track of your habits. So I highly recommend it for those reasons for any student because as you know, when you go to university or to college or to high school or when you study in general, you need to be the master of your schedule to keep track of what you're doing, to study, to do your homework every day. And these are tiny steps you can just do every single day instead of just waiting last minute to cram it before that final. This is a book that teaches you how to do that, how to form little goals, little mini activities that you can do each day so that you're not caught off guard when that final comes. The next two books I was required to read them for a Psychology of Motivation class, so I absolutely love them and I think you should too. These are very light reads, but mind you, they do have some psychology science jargon, 
so you might need a dictionary or a Google handy, but I find them really, really well written and well explained. And I'm just going to start with the first one. It's why we do what we do, understanding self-motivation by Edward L. Deci, D-E-C-I, if you want to look it up. So we're talking about motivation in my previous video. This is one that you should pick up. It is very small, very easy to read, very easy to follow, and I'm just going to read you the back to give you a better idea of what the author talks about in this one. So, what motivates us as students, employees, and individuals? If you reward your children for doing their homework, they will usually respond by getting it done. But is this the most effective method of motivation? No, says psychologist Edward L. Desi, who challenges traditional thinking and shows that this method actually works against performance. The best way to motivate people at school, at work, or at home is to support their sense of autonomy. So autonomy support. Um, explaining the reasons why a task is important and then allowing as much personal freedom as possible in carrying out the task will stimulate interesting uh, will stimulate interest and commitment and is a much more effective approach than the standard system of reward and punishment. So why, no, instead of asking how can I motivate people, we should be asking how can I create the conditions within which people will motivate themselves. So basically this book is all about self-motivation, um, autonomy, support, and how you can motivate others or yourself. And I believe that as students, um, I mean, come on, you, you need a motivation book to be a student because you need to get motivated. And I find that from everything I read, this book really stood out to me because it was very well explained and it just it f makes you feel very empowered. The next book, like I mentioned, was also a uh, required reading for my Psychology of Motivation class and this one is called The Talent Code. It's by Daniel Coyle and his greatness isn't born, it's grown. Here's how. So I'm just gonna read you a little bit. Ooh, that's a pretty big... Okay. Whether you're coaching soccer or teaching a child to play piano, writing a novel, or trying to improve your golf swing, this revolutionary book shows you how to grow talent by tapping into a newly discovered brain mechanism. Drawing on cutting-edge neurology and first-hand research gathered on journeys to nine of the world's talented hotbeds from the, ba from the baseball fields of the Caribbean, to a classical music academy in upstate New York, Coyle identifies the three key elements that will allow you to develop your gifts and optimize your performance in sports, arts, music, math, or just about anything. So basically, this book, I find that it is important for every student to read because it shows you that you don't just like, you're just not inherently bad at math. This book tells you that you have talents and you can be good at anything if you put your mind to it because greatness isn't born, it's grown and this book shows you how. Again, um, unfortunately because it was for a psych course, it does have psychological jargon like the previous one so keep the Google handy but it's very easy to read, plenty of examples. If you like sports, there's a lot of like examples on golf players and baseball players and football players which I wasn't a big fan of those examples because I couldn't really relate, but they also offer um, musicians and um, mathematicians and geniuses and whatnot. And it shows you that, you know, to get where they are, they practiced. Or if it's innately there, the practice and the willingness and the drive to do it makes them better. And this is important for every student, like I mentioned, because you do, you're not bad at science or at chem you just need more practice than someone that's comfortable in it. So you can grow it, you can develop it. And it's kind of like saying, you're not a lost cause, like I thought when I did stats. I'm like, oi, I can't understand this, but this book showed me that yes, I can. It just takes a little effort. So definitely give it a shot, it's an excellent book. And the final book on my list is Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion. And this one is by Robert B. Cialdini. I hope I pronounced that right, but I know this book has been famous for a while and I just just got my hands on it, so I was honestly 
From the first two pages I read this, I'm like, yes, I need to recommend this to everyone and their mother and their grandmother because y'all need to read this, okay? I'm just gonna read you the back. Okay. Influence. The classic book on persuasion explains the psychology of why people say yes and how to apply these understandings. Dr. Robert B. Cialdini is the seminal expert in the rapidly expanding field of influence and persuasion. His 35 years of rigorous evidence-based research, along with the three-year program of study on what moves people to change behavior, has resulted in this highly acclaimed book. You'll learn the six universal principles, how to use them to become a skilled persuader, and how to defend yourself against them. Perfect for people, perfect for, all, for people in all walks of life, the principles of influence will move you towards profound personal change and act as a driving force for your success. Now, you're probably looking at this and being, Anna, why do I need to influence people to like excel in school? Well, my friend, I shall tell you why. When you are applying to that graduate school or to the university of your dreams or when you are defending your thesis or when you're defending your point or presenting or you just want to hear some yes from the crowd or yes on your application, guess what? You need to persuade and influence people. You need to develop your selling strategies. You need to sell and market yourself. And before you do that, before you come up with a successful marketing and selling strategy, you need to understand what sells and how people are influenced and how they are more likely to say yes to you versus another candidate or what will give you the leg up on the competition. I think it is a very good book to read for anyone, even in work, like if you're looking for a new job or if you're like right now sitting in that interview, give this a go. It's not, it, I know the title looks bad and you're like, I don't want to manipulate everyone and scheme and like, then I didn't deserve it. It's because I manipulated them. It's really not that. It's not intended on that. It's just some research done by the psychologist to help you understand how people think, how people get more convinced and how it can improve your communication skills to help people understand your point. So it's kind of like when the door is shut, you can't get through. So you can talk all you want, the door is not open, it's locked. This book helps you, is like the key, so it helps you unlock the door so you can communicate, you can see each other. Whether or not you walk through that door, it's not because you manipulated people, it's because you just opened the door and gave yourself a shot, so why wouldn't you read this? Now with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and if you want to see more book recommendation and book favorites video. And definitely subscribe to me if you like what you see. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!